Evening Winthrop and welcome to Winthrop Town Council meeting of February 16th, 2021. This meet is, meeting is being held remotely with each person uh, calling in from their own home. This meeting will be shown live on WCAT and it will be recorded for re-showing throughout the week. There is a telephone number to call to uh, join us for public hearing and for public comment. That telephone number is 1-301-715-8592. The ID number for the call is 898-336-9500. Pound. Okay, so hopefully everybody has that. I will read it again just before um, the public comment section of this meeting. Uh, would you please take a roll call? Councilor Ruggiero. Here. Councilor Flockhart. Here. Councilor DeMarco. Good evening, everyone. Here. Councilor Terry. Councilor Honan. Here. Councilor Conti. Present. Councilor Perino. Here. Vice President Christopher. Here. President Boncori. Here. Thank you. Okay, there being a quorum, I will now call the meeting to order. The meeting is now in order. Could I please have uh, the Pledge of Allegiance flag put up? And Councilor Ruggiero, would you please lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, of America. and to the republic, to the republic for, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, 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 indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty, and, and justice America. for all. Would everybody please remain standing for a moment of silence? And I would like to offer this moment of silence and a prayer for Margaret Faison, uh, the grandmother of our town manager who passed away. Uh, recently. So please, a moment of silence in honor of uh, Margaret Faison. Thank you. Okay. And I have a motion to approve the minutes of the February 2nd, 2021 meeting. Motion. motion. Motion's been made, I believe by uh, Vice President Christopher, seconded by Council Ruggiero. Uh, is there any discussion on the minutes? Are there any amendments? Are there any additions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye when your name is called. Council Ruggiero. Yes. Council Flockhart. Yes. Council DeMarco. Yes. Councilor Terry? Councilor Honan? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Councilor Perino? Yes. Vice President Christopher? Yes. Yeah. President Boncori? Yes. Thank you. The minutes are approved. And we'll move on to uh, general information and recommendations. And uh, there's a lot been going on in the past uh, week. Uh, of course, we've been having a, a serious problem in getting a vaccine set up and a site set up to vac vaccinate uh, Winthrop members. Winthrop um, constituents over 75, of course, can join into any one of the uh, the East Boston Neighborhood Health Centers, the uh, Gillette Stadium, and so on to get to get vaccinated. But we've been fighting to get vaccinations in here into Winthrop for the past uh, week and a half or so. And uh, TPH has not been uh, responding to give us any until after the 75 people have all uh, given their shots. However, you know, seeing the need to reach out to people that are over 75 and uh, can't get out to a site because they're homebound, we, we made a request uh, through East Boston Neighborhood Health Center and I want to thank uh, that CEO, uh, Manny Lopes, because as of Monday, he would get us 100 doses of COVID uh, 
19, Moderna COVID-19 vaccination. And Meredith uh, was able to go out and uh, deliver vaccinations to people that are over 75 and housebound. Uh, we've got 100 uh, vaccinations and uh, within four days, we were able to give out a whole 100 vaccinations. And they were given to people over 75 uh, in their homes. I wanna thank the, uh, the fire department for helping merit distribute these because there's a lot of protocol to giving vaccinations, giving them to someone, that person has to be observed for 30 minutes. So we were able to enlist a, a crew of firemen who are all EMTs to travel with um, Meredith to people's houses, give them a vaccination and stay with them for the uh, required period of time. Uh, and two days ago, we were able to conduct a, uh, a vaccination site at Golden Drive uh, to hit the people that were over 75 there and uh, had not been vaccinated. So we were uh, able to deliver 60 doses uh, there at Golden Drive. Uh, Meredith had trained uh, six other people in the protocols to give vaccines and we could open up a vaccine site anytime because we have now, the, we have the place to do it. We can do it at Golden Drive or we can do it at the Senior Center. And uh, we have the people who are trained to do it and we have the people who are trained to the firemen stay in and watch the people after they receive it. The problem is that we can't get the vaccine. Uh, we were able to get 100 doses from East Boston Neighborhood Health Center. I wanna thank Senator Joe Malcori who's been fighting and, and working on uh, DPH to get us some for next week. Hopefully by next week, we'll be receiving two to 300 more either through DPH and if they don't come through with it, hopefully we'll be able to get more from East Boston Neighborhood Health Center. And uh, once all the 75 and overs and shut-ins are done, we will be able to start giving it out to the 65 and over. So uh, that's report. I'm sure you're gonna hear a video from uh, uh, Meredith as well, talking about this. But uh, in the past weekend and past day, uh, we did pretty well as far as not having a lot. Usually we've been getting 40 people over a weekend. And this weekend, we only had 14 people that came down with COVID. And, as of today, there were only two. So I think we're getting ourselves out of the red. I think if everybody's patient, wears their mask and stays socially distanced, we're gonna beat this thing in the next month or two. And I think we will be able to vaccinate a lot of people in winter that are over 65 uh, before you know uh, March is, is over for sure. So um, please be patient, wear your mask and do what you're supposed to do. Uh, as far as COVID, uh, the next thing, as far as recommendations, uh, elections are coming up. We, council will not be meeting again before the elections that are coming up, the primary elections in March, uh, on March 2nd. So I wanted to make sure, I know that the, uh, Joanne DeMond has done a great job. She got all the postcards out to every registered voter as to where their voting places are. But I wanted to reiterate that tonight that uh, for the March 2nd election, precincts one, two, and five will be voting at the former Middles, uh, Winthrop Middle School Gymnasium at 151 Pauline Street. Uh, and they should enter the door adjacent to the uh, Evolution Skating Rink. All people voting there will be required to wear a face mask, uh, bring their own pen if they do not want to use one of the pens that is there, I bring a black marker. Uh, and uh, to please avoid social distance and maintain the six feet when you're in line to vote. Uh, Precinct four will be meeting as usual at the John G. O'Connell Hall on Nine Golden Drive. Precincts three and six will be voting at the Winthrop Senior Center at 35 Harvard Street. All right, this is a, a change from the last election and it may, uh, only be a change for this election, but because of the pandemic, please uh, take mind and let people you know, know where they're voting uh, it, from your neighbors, if you see any of them. Okay, um, that's all I have as far as general information. 
Uh, and I think I will open this uh, now for a public hearing. And we are having a public hearing tonight uh, as to whether or not the town council should authorize $37,750 for the use of retained earnings in the water sewer fund. So I will um, now open that public hearing and Council Letheria has joined us. Would you like to take the lead on this? Sure, thank you. Thank you, Council President. Um, just on this, we have we did not have a uh, finance committee meeting um, out of respect for the town manager last evening. And this motion will wait until our next meeting, which the assistant town manager public that she does not have a problem with. Um, but it, so we can either continue the public hearing for the next meeting or we could go over it now. It's totally up to you. I think we could go over it now. Okay. Uh, so I, I'd like to go to the assistant town manager for some back, uh, back up with this. Sure. Uh, thank you, Councillor. So this, uh, this motion is to transfer $37,750 uh, from the water sewer fund retained earnings to use um, to finalize uh, paying for the cost of the repairs for the um, for the uh, sewer break on Revere Street. Um, the council may recall that recently uh, the council was um, the council provided authorization for um, the town to borrow funding to finance uh, the repairs related to this um, to this issue. And Director Cal is on and can provide more details about the specific costs associated with this. But what we did um, when we brought the motion for the borrowing to the council was to pursue an approach that had the lowest net impact in terms of cost to the town, um, in terms of the town's finances, and also the lowest impact as possible to the rate pairs in terms of what would come on to the fund for debt service. And so we maximized our use of the previously authorized um, uh, financing program that was actually 75% grant. So there will only be small debt service payments. And then because we only had a certain amount of that available to us for that financing program, this transfer from the retained earnings would cover the remainder of the cost. And we feel very comfortable um, coming to the council to request this transfer. The water sewer retained earnings were certified at the end of FY20 around $671,000. So uh, this won't um, materially deplete those funds and we'll still have a healthy balance there. And um, Director Catlin, if there's anything I missed in terms of the project, I think this total project cost ended up actually under budget where we thought under our initial projections and landed around 310,000 if I recall uh, correctly on that. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we were at one time, uh, the estimate was as high as 375,000. So we, we were happy to um, come in uh, well below uh, that anticipated budget uh, as, um, Assistant CFO, uh, I'm sorry, uh, as Anna's assistant town manager spoke to, we did utilize uh, as much as we could from the uh, MWRA uh, II program, which is a 75% grant. So, you know, it's, we, we were able to do uh, the majority of the project for 25 cents on the dollar. And this transfer is, uh, is the remainder of, uh, of the balance owed to, uh, to, to pay off the remaining invoices. Okay. Is there anyone from the public that wants to be heard at the public hearing on this issue of the uh, water sewer money? Is there anyone with a hand up? I see we have uh, 17 attendees. 17 attendees, but no hands. No hands. All right, anyone from the council want to be heard at the public hearing? Anyone? All right, hearing none. Council President, this is, uh, again, more of a formality. We had uh, passed the appropriation of this and discussed it earlier. We will be having a finance committee uh, at our next schedule, before our next scheduled meeting. And um, I am hopeful that we will come back with a positive recommendation on it. Okay. Thank you, Council Chair. All right. I will uh, make a motion to close the public hearing. I'm still moved. Motion's been made and seconded. Seconded. Did I hear a second? Seconded by Council DeMarco uh, to close the public hearing. All those in favor say aye when your name is called. 
Councilor Ruggiero? Yes. Councilor Flockhart? Yes. Councilor DeMarco? Councilor Terry? Yes. Councilor Honan? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Councilor Perino? Yes. Vice President Christopher? Yeah. President Boncori? Yes. Thank you. Larissa, I felt uh, victim to the mute button. Yeah, so, I yes. saw you. Yeah. All right, uh, that hearing is closed. And we will move on now um, to public comment. This is regular public comment. We can talk uh, for three minutes about any issue that you would like. But please remember it's only three minutes. <laughs> Uh, first up, I have Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen Capuccio, 49 Waldemar Ave. Um, hi, Kathleen. Over the, hi, everyone. Um, over the past couple of months, um, we've had a counselor use her right to make personal statements uh, with regard to the insurrection, if you will, at the Capitol, um, the Black Lives Matter movement. I would really hope at some point that another counselor or someone would make a statement with regard to a very important local issue, which is our children not being in school. Um, I think national issues are very important, of course. Um, I think they're, the politics of that might be a little inappropriate. However, um, but what's not inappropriate is for someone on the council to please use their time to make a personal statement to get our kids back into school. Um, it, it, it's the, the it's been deafening, quite frankly, from the council. Um, so I would hope that someone might want to use their personal statement time um, to talk about helping to support our school committee and our teachers to get. Um, our children back in school. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kathleen. Is there anyone else on public comment? No, I don't see any other hands up at this time. No other hands up or public comments at this time. We'll, we'll move on. I just have a uh, President Pompori. Yes. Can I respond to that public comment? Uh, that's not what public comment is for. You can make a statement. Okay. Later in public no, comment. That's fine. That's it's fine. not a, it's a, not a debate back and forth. Okay, no, that's fine. Right. I would give Tracy if she wanted to respond to she, she was mentioned, but other than that, I don't think there's any, uh, you know, reason to. Okay. 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 Mo moving on. Uh, no other public comment. We'll go into uh, correspondence. But Denise, before we do that, uh, did minutes of the executive session of February 9th go out yet? Not yet, no. Okay, so we'll make sure that we have those for our next uh, meeting. Yes. Yep. Okay, because um, that business is uh, pretty much completed that we could. Uh, we can make them public, yep. Go. Okay. No problem. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you uh, for our next meeting. All right, we're at uh, correspondence. Do we have any correspondence? Denise? I've, re I've received none, no. Okay. All right, moving on to committee reports. Finance committee did not meet, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, do you have anything that you want to bring forward? Uh, no. Okay. Public safety committee, uh, Councilor Flocka. Uh, the public safety committee met on Monday. We've decided on the national grid issues. We need more information. I've contacted national grid who will get back to me. We will report, uh, we will have another meeting and then report at the next town council meeting. Okay, so those meet matters are on for old business. You will make a motion at that time when we reach old business. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else on the public safety committee besides those? Okay, no, hearing I don't that. Think so. Okay, moving on, we'll go to one. Um, the Joint Rules and Ordinance Committee report with uh, economic development. Who's got to lead? Peter, Councilor, Vice President Christopher. Yeah, so the um, the Joint Committee met last 
Thursday um, to refine our recommendation. It's uh, very similar to the recommendation that we roughly came up with at the last, um, we presented at the last meeting. Um, I'll go over it again. So um, the idea would be to extend the center business district across Pauline Street over um, across the middle school uh, site. Um, one thing that the committee did make, try to make a distinction from was the um, parcels on Waldemar Street from the, um, the rest of the building so that um, we could really maintain the character of the, um, of the residential neighborhood on Waldemar Street and ensure to everybody there that um, we wouldn't have businesses um, up on that side of the middle school parcel. Um, the, with, the, with the extension of the center business district, um, we're also recommending that we uh, make changes to the mixed use policy within our zoning code. Um, this was done uh, in response to uh, many public, much public comments around uh, commercial vacancies in the center business district. I think a lot of people felt like if there was a requirement that 100% of the frontage uh, around uh, whatever is developed here was commercial that, that we would be left with uh, vacancies as we've seen in some other areas where mixed use has been, uh, has been used in town. Like I mentioned at the last meeting, we're also suggesting changes uh, to that, the, the buffer area in the uh, dimensional table so that it will be uh, distance based rather than parcel based. Uh, the thought with this being that the uh, center, the business districts would be uh, the, that that area would be used more uniformly around the around the business district, and also it would reduce um, some arbitrary use, uh, uses of it that just pop up when you have a um, when you're using it parcel by parcel base. Um, the other recommendation that the committee had was to eliminate the payments in lieu of parking. Uh, provision within the center business district. Um, this is also something that we've heard a lot of uh, people complain about, the idea being that uh, a property owner could uh, just pay the town uh, to get uh, out of parking obligations that they would have to provide. Um, we had a lot of people uh, at the meeting who provided public comment. Um, and uh, we had a good conversation with many people who were there. So um, we're hoping that this recommendation can get passed and sent to the planning board, where the planning board will make uh, any changes that they'd like uh, before they send it back to the council, all within the statutory deadline. So um, that was uh, generally our recommendation, and I'm sure we'll be talking about it more in new business, or old business, excuse me. Okay, and old business, I believe. Okay, do you want to add anything, Councilor Honan? Okay. All right, any questions for uh, Councilor Christopher on this from the council? All right, hearing none, uh, we'll move forward and we'll take that up under our uh, whole business. Uh, Assistant Town Manager, Anna Friedman, would you please give us a town manager's report? Sure, thank you, Council President. I'll cover that tonight um, in um, the town manager's absence. Uh, just to get started, um, we have a presentation from Public Health Director Meredith Hurley, who couldn't join us tonight, but um, has um, provided a presentation for us. Larissa, would you be able to pull that up for the council sure, and the well. public? Yep. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. This is Meredith Hurley from the Winthrop Health Department, and I just wanted to provide you with a few updates. Can everybody hear that? Yep. Okay. It's related to COVID and our vaccine rollout. So as of today, we've had 1,919 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with 35 deceased, um, 47 are currently isolated and 1,837 have, have recovered. Um, I'm happy to report that our incident rate is going down. We are currently at 57.9 cases per 100,000, with our percent positive rate sitting below 5% at 4.85, meaning we are now a yellow designated community. So we are definitely moving in the right direction. 
wanted to talk a little bit about where we're at with vaccine rollout. Um, currently, the Commonwealth is still in step one, phase two, meaning those over the age of 75 are eligible. Um, unfortunately, our vaccine supply is still very limited, and we have no indications when step two will become eligible. Um, we have not been allocated vaccines directly to the Winthrop Health Department from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, although we have been transferred 100 frozen doses of Moderna from East Boston Neighborhood Health Center, which, we, which I am extremely grateful for. Um, of those 100 doses, 10 of those doses went to first responders as their second doses. 40 have been used to serve as homebound elders, and 40 doses were used at a clinic hosted um, for those currently eligible at the Winthrop Housing Authority. Um, it wasn't specific to Winthrop Housing Authority residents. It was open to anybody that was eligible over the age of 75. Um, we have 10 remaining doses that we'll be working for our homebound wait list starting um, later this week and early next week. So about the homebound vaccinations. So what we've been doing is targeting those over the age of 75 that cannot access vaccine sites. There seems to be a good amount of vaccine sites here locally if people are able to access them via either their own transportation, public transportation, transportation that we can coordinate or family and friends. Um, this is a, a specific effort for those that cannot access those. So what we've done is we've put together three person teams with one vaccinator and two firefighting firefighters that are certified as EMTs um, because since this is a new vaccine, everybody who re receives the vaccine needs to be monitored for 15 to 30 minutes post vaccination for um, risk of anaphylaxis. Um, so in order to speed up the vaccination process because the vaccine itself can be limiting um, once the vial is, is punctured and, and the stability of it, what we've done is we have one vaccinator and two firefighters. So. The teams go in, the vaccinator provides a vaccine. Um, one of the firefighters stays and monitors the, the patient for 15 to 20 minutes, um, 30 minutes if there's a reaction history. And, um, and then the vaccinator and the second firefighter moves on to the second house and, they, um, and the vaccinator provides a vaccination. The second firefighter waits there with the individual for 15 to 30 minutes and then continues on and meets the, the first firefighter at the third house. And so it's a, essentially a, a leapfrog pattern that we've done. I did it myself last Thursday. We were able to cover almost um, 20, 20 people with those vaccinations. Um, it was a great day of getting out into the community. Um, and then what you'll see here on this past Monday, we had two teams of three people going out. So we have the two vaccinators in the picture with me and um, one team of the firefighters that went out. So um, we've gotten great feedback from the community saying that they're grateful for being able to provide this service. Um, and if there are folks in our community that would like more information or to be placed on the wait list, please call us at 607-539-5837. We simultaneously held a vaccine clinic with the remaining with the remaining doses available. This was an appointment-based um, clinic and it was open to anybody who was currently eligible over the age of 75 or as a phase one um, eligible population. We had 26 appointments pre-booked and we were able to, we had an additional 14 who were waitlisted that we were also vaccinated. This was an example of a, of a great community partnership between the Winthrop Housing Authority and the Medical Reserve Corps and the Winthrop Fire Department and also Action Ambulance who also provided support services the day of the clinic. Um, the top picture are all of our MRC volunteers, um, as are the, the bottom picture of those that were at vaccine stations. So how to make an appointment. Um, there is still a lot of appointments available locally if, if people are interested in being vaccinated. Um, Fenway Park, South Boston Community Health Center, Walgreens, the CVS in, um, in Revere, also the CVS in East Boston. Um, in addition, East Boston Neighborhood Health Center is um, is still making appointments at their sites. Um, and so if people, if it's easier for folks to make an appointment just using a phone number, their phone number is 617-568-5870.
And how can the Winthrop Health Department um, help you with, with any of these? So we can provide assistance making online vaccine appointments, also provide contact numbers for East Boston neighborhood vaccine clinic registrations, transportation and coordination to vaccine sites. Also for those that are homebound, um, we can put you on the wait list for vaccination and also provide assistance with making test appointments for those who do not have an email or and or internet access. Again, the phone number at the EOC is 617-539-5827. An update on the Project Beacon site. So this is the latest numbers that were provided to me from Project Beacon um, for their last three weeks of testing. So yeah, as you'll see, they started off their available, available appointments at 2,600 and have now ramped up to making 4,800 appointments available during the five days of that. Um, their capacity on the first week was over 50%, um, but has um, decreased to um, the high 30% in the last two weeks. And um, as you'll see, the amount of Winthrop residents that are taking advantage of this site and being tested at this site has steadily increased over the last three weeks. Um, and the percent positive doesn't seem to have fluctuated. Um, it's, it's fluctuated, but not by vast amounts of um, percentages. So um, those are my updates that I can provide for you right now. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith. She has done an outstanding job. I can't say enough good things about uh, the job she's done. And uh, we got that 100 shots and she got them out right away. And she put together those teams and had to train them. So she deserved the day off today. <laughs> Thank you, Meredith, yeah. so much. Go ahead. Huge thank you to Meredith. And just as she noted, if any counselors have questions, uh, please send her an email. Um, I just have a couple um, quick things just to follow up on some of the content um, that she presented on. And then I have some brief updates from our other departments on some of the projects that they're working on um, that, are, that would, I, we believe would be of interest to folks. Uh, just really quickly, in case any of the counselors are wondering, how are we paying for all of the vaccina uh, vaccination related efforts? So FEMA is actually reimbursing 100% for most, if not all costs. So the town should not have to bear any cost burden related to our vaccination efforts to the extent that we somehow come up with a cost that is not FEMA eligible. Um, I would be quite certain that our CARES Act allocation would be able to pick that up. So um, having to pay for efforts related to having to use town funding to pay for vaccination should not be a concern that we will need to worry about. Um, additionally, in terms of getting um, information out to the public um, through, uh, through additional means, um, including the presentation that Director Hurley just made, we're actually working on a mailer right now that we're hoping to get out the door in the next, not this week, um, likely early next week, so that folks that are not necessarily internet savvy or don't have a chance to catch this on TV um, can also get something in their mailbox um, that will have resources on it. Uh, we'll give a heads up to the council on that content before it goes out. Um, we're also working to, um, for folks that are internet savvy, we're working to kind of give a nice refresh to our COVID-19 website as well. So we're hoping to have a lot of different resources for folks that are seeking information about vaccinations, as we know. It is uh, sort of fast and furious with updates and folks are really interested in trying to know how they can access it or help someone else access it as well. Um, so that's on everything on uh, the public health front. Um, I would not be the best person to field any additional questions on that. So. Um, please uh, give Meredith an email if any of the counselors have any additional questions there. So some other updates from our, from our uh, other town department. Um, the library, wanted to let folks know that we are average, at the library um, averaging about six hours per day for front door pickup opportunities, Monday through Saturday. Um, our children's librarian has started creating a take and make craft bag available for our young patrons on a first come first serve basis. And that's through the front door pickup schedule and that will happen and we'll continue with these about twice a month the library held a virtual presentation with ted reinstein on february 2nd a new virtual presentation is in the works for march that will be announced soon so stay tuned for that and uh, it's tax season um, the library has on hand federal and state tax forms and instructions and is including access to these for citizens via the front door pickup schedule um, our senior center they're continuing to be a great partner in keeping seniors up to date on the latest information regarding the vaccines. Um, they're also continuing to serve those that are quarantined with food and or um, prescription delivery. 
if you or someone you know needs assistance with that, please give the Senior Center a call. Uh, their number is 617-846-8538, or you can also call that EOC number that was in Meredith's presentation, which is 617-539-5837. Our veterans agent has been very busy, um, as always. Um, after following up um, a bunch of um, program, programming that she did over Thanksgiving and Christmas, serving approximately 75 families um, with a number of um, sort of things like turkeys, gift cards, um, groceries. They're continuing, uh, she's continuing to provide groceries um, during their food bank services if needed during the month. Um, we've had uh, over 40 veterans enrolled in the VA health care system recently so they can get vaccinated. And um, our veterans agent is working um, very diligently to push out vaccination information locations and dates to our veteran population in town. Um, we, and this also providing well-being checks on housebound veterans. Our public health department, in addition to COVID, um, is, is also staying very busy on um, our CLEAR program. And I believe you may have heard recently that, um, that they were sort of highlighted um, as a mentor program um, through, the, um, through their participation in the Department of Justice Bureau of Justice Assistance Mentor Program as a model for other communities interested in similar programs across the country. Um, they are, have been selected to present at um, two um, national prescription drug and heroin, uh, sorry, excuse me, they were selected to present two separate uh, presentations at the National Prescription Drug and Heroin, heroin Summit in April virtually um, on building partnerships partnerships and under-resourced communities. So they've been very busy in addition to all of the work on COVID-19. Um, from the finance end, um, just so the council knows, we're almost done with our FY20 audit and you'll hopefully be receiving copies of that in March and we can schedule a presentation from our external auditor if you would like um, them to come in and present on, on their um, any findings. Hopefully there are no audit findings, but any just general comments they might have. Um, we're hard at work on preparing for the FY22 budget based on the latest conversations between myself and the town manager. I believe the town manager's budget will be presented at the council's first meeting in April. We want to make sure that we can see our February revenue so that we have the latest updates on revenue for this year so that we can hopefully avoid having to do multiple iterations of the budget this year as we did last year due to the changing um, revenue picture due to COVID. So we're very busy on that. Um, on the treasurer collector front, um, an FYI for folks that motor vehicle ex excise tax bills are going out. Um, those will be due March 29th. Um, They're also beginning their tax title process and will conduct the final tax takings for FY 2020, so that was last year, by mid-April of this year. Also, um, we're mailing out boat excise tax bills soon. Those will be due the last week of April. New this year, boat excise tax um, will be available to pay online. So similar process for paying other bills, you can also access online payment for that. Um, our assessor is still going through their normal process for inspections um, and preparing for our reevaluation, which occurs in FY23. Uh, DPW is also uh, very busy preparing for phase two of the CBD project, which will be resuming in March. Um, we, um, the bid opening for the contract eight lead line replacement project is currently scheduled for March 4th. And the bid documents for the dog park maintenance shed are nearing completion, and we're striving for a late March bid opening in order to break ground in April. Our new um, planning and development director is very hard at work on uh, working on the middle school rezoning and a number of other grant application opportunities and collaborating with the North Suffolk Office of Resilience and Sustainability, which is that regional office that the town manager recently um, sort of came to the council on for that three-year contract. They're beginning their hiring selection soon. And so um, Rachel, um, our new planning director will assist in that hiring process. Um, and she's also at work on a number of other uh, projects as well. Um, and FYI for um, just updates at the rink, uh, they're wrapping up their high school season. They successfully hosted 23 games for the high school as well as for Danvers, Beverly, and Marblehead who were not able to play on their regular um, ice. Um, and there are four games left this week. So those are just some of the kind of external facing um, projects that are going on with other departments. We just wanted to check in and let the council know and the public know um, just all the work that still continues to be ongoing. So that's all I have. Um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer anything that I can in Austin's absence. Council Farino. Thank you, Anna. That was a great presentation. Um, just, I had one constituent uh, correspond to me. The temporary platform that is out in front of the library, uh, oh, I, yeah. I wanted to assure him that that is temporary. 
and he was concerned that that was a uh, historic uh, part of the historic district and there may uh, should have been some protocols I don't know if if the uh, historic commission was contacted uh, and I couldn't give him that answer but in the future if we are going to put one out there could we make sure we uh, contact uh, chairman uh, uh, Bono uh, that it would be there and I assure Mr. Stanley that, that it is temporary and uh, um, it, it will come down and be rotated throughout the town at some point. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, they, the parklets are definitely temporary and I will let the town manager know about the uh, question about um, coordinating um, with folks on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for the town manager's report? Or assistant the town manager? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, school committee report the school committee uh, met not this week but last week february 8th at six o'clock uh, and it was a remote meeting uh there were discussions about uh the contract with the superintendent which were will be coming up uh, and they're in the middle of negotiation with her as a subcommittee uh the superintendent's report she reported that uh, most of the, the meeting uh took place and the report was on the DDOS attack that we received uh, and it knocked out most of the uh, the uh, communications of not only in the school but in town hall. That was the major uh, gist of the entire meeting. Uh, and there was a, an update on it uh, and talked about how we got retrofit in Comcast, Landfall, Balsam Tech, international staff, uh, DNS came in uh, to work on the cyber attack. Finally, uh, I think uh, Terry was on here, Delahan, for getting uh, Homeland Security involved, were now able to mitigate that situation and to uh, be able to stop it uh, between Comcast, uh, Bandwidth is now okay, and now have some hot spots. Terry, do you want to add anything to that, Chief Delahan? As to how uh, you got Homeland Security to come in and, and work that out? Sure. I just want to make sure I get both mics uh, muted. So here, I, I think I'm fine now. Um, thank you. So again, you know, um, my hats off to Detective Wayne Carter, who coordinates with Homeland Security on a, on a daily basis, um, especially with the IT stuff, and also has been tremendous throughout COVID, um, getting us up and running with the EOCs. Um, both EOC, one at the E.B. Newton, and one over at the uh, American Legion Hall. So uh, as we have gone through this process over the last year at the EOCs, we have forged these relationships and strengthened them. So we're able to quickly add, get balls and technologies involved and Lantel from Homeland Security, who runs the uh, UASI area, which is involving nine uh, communities, one of being one of the nine, Everett, Chelsea, Revere, Boston, Brookline, Quincy, um, basically every, everyone who touches Boston is part of that region. So they were able to come in with their tools and, and attack, attach it to our servers to find out when, when exactly uh, the surge was coming in and how do we defeat the surge and, and, and put filters on to make sure those surges are not coming in. So Comcast was working with Lisa. Lisa has worked on this. Uh, I think she knows more about IT than any, anyone else at this point. So my hat's off to her for sticking with it and getting us to the point that um, we're able to work together. Again, as a team, nothing is done as individuals. Uh, it takes many people um, to get this to stop and also make sure it doesn't exist in the future. We are at that point. Homeland Security is doing a review uh, and we'll send that review to us and also make some suggestions to how do we increase the security on the town's network as well as the, the um, schools network so you know anyone could do this at any po point in time other communities did have it done to them um, through Homeland Security is a, a state police officer has been assigned uh, Detective Carter is working with that state trooper um, but they have had informed us other other communities had suffered the same type of uh, attack I'm just grateful it's attack without a breach of uh, information or uh, actual damage to any of our devices um, so th this attack was basically overwhelming our networks and kicking people off our networks. Um, so uh, if we had to have an attack, this is the type of attack that you want. I know that doesn't sound great, but um, it could have been far worse. 
and it was minimized. Comcast has been great to work with, working with uh, um, Superintendent Howard, and we'll continue to monitor this as, as a team and continue to put things in place um, behind the scenes. Um, obviously, we won't well, publicly tell everyone that what we put in place because it will defeat the purpose of putting that in place. So thank you for the support, and thank you to the town manager's office for his support. Um, it makes our jobs much easier. Okay, and, and this is part of the school department report, but I want to thank Chief Telehanty and uh, Officer Carter and you know the town manager's office for getting on this right away. It was a problem that had to be discovered, and it was discovered and took a day or two, but we found out what it was, and it's now cured. And uh, thanks to the team that put that together. Uh, other than that, uh, the, the school department, you know, uh, they're reaching out now to the 515 people, uh, students that uh, had opted to remain fully remote. They're inviting them back to come in as hybrid. Uh, we don't, I don't have the answer yet as to how many of them now are accepting that invitation, uh, but hopefully uh, some of the 515 will now come back uh, remote, come back uh, into hybrid rather than staying fully remote. Other than that, we had a point in a new custodian, and we uh, learned of the retirement at the end of the year of uh, a longtime teacher, Melinda Flanagan. We're going to be sad to see her go. And that's the school committee department report. Does anybody have any questions for me on it? Councilor Terry. Hey, thank you, uh, Council President, for that. And maybe we could address these, the assistant town manager. Also, it has there been or uh, what was the cost associated with mitigating the DDOS attack and where were those funds coming from? Uh, thanks, Councilor. Happy to answer that. We are still uh, receiving the invoices associated with all the, the mitigation that needed to occur in response to that. Um, we have been in touch with Maya. We have a line of coverage uh, related to cyber attacks. Um, the, the chief and I, um, and Superintendent Howard have had actually multiple conversations with Maya, and we are in the process of compiling our invoices to send over to them to determine if they will provide coverage for that. And so it's still yet to be determined. Um, it's my hope that we'll have some coverage from our insurer on that, and they're also able to help provide additional, potentially additional resources for us to assess in partnership um, with all the efforts that the chief laid out, um, any other sort of security uh, measures that they may recommend for us to take as well. And just a follow up, what's our deductibility on the um, cyber attack insurance? So I believe we have, we actually have a $7,500 retainer for them to involve uh, what they call breach counsel. So it's sort of a team on their end. I don't, I'll have to go back and look at the policy. I don't believe that there's a separate deductible other than that specific retainer. But I can, circle, I will circle back with you on that if I see something different on my end. So we're, we're evaluating full transparency. We're evaluating whether or not the invoices are going to be so much to make it make sense for us to actually potentially pay for that amount of money for breach counsel. We want to make sure that um, we are only paying what we need to pay for while also doing our proper diligence in remedying the issue and ensuring it never happens again. Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone else have any questions? Council DeMarco? Uh, Council President, I, um, I obviously pay attention to the school committee meetings. Um, because my daughter's in school. Um, just really quick, um, my understanding is that they uh, had asked uh, Superintendent Lisa Howard to look into spacing between three feet, four feet, five feet, um, and that report was going to be issued on March 8th to see if they could go back to school four days a week starting in April. I just wanted to make sure my information was accurate. Yes, uh, a report is being done by uh, the superintendent to see just that, uh, how many kids we can bring back uh, into school full-time because that's our goal is to, to get everybody back full-time five days a week, not four days a week. But we need to check on whether we can do it at three feet, four feet, and five feet because of room. So the superintendent is working out that plan and she is going to present it to the school department but uh, it didn't come up as an issue only. Uh, the issue is that she is doing the research uh, and finding out what we can do to bring people back. Okay, there was also a motion made uh, that was to go back uh, as a committee to a meeting in person that, that was defeated. 
minutes, but I didn't think that was important to bring up either. Okay, once we do have that report, I will report on it to the council. Uh, it, uh, you know, and I tell other people that can't make it to the school committee meeting. Thank you, council president. Okay, is there any other questions on the school department? Hearing none, we'll move right into our old business. And uh, I'm gonna take three uh, issues at once uh, on old business, 12A, 12B, and 12C are all national grid plans. And I would add, uh, there's a motion to accept them, but I believe a motion is coming out of your committee, uh, Council Flockhart, is that correct? Yes, and we're motioning that they be tabled till the next okay. council meeting. All right, there's a motion to table the uh, three um, different national grid plans, one for Madison Ave, one for Bolton Street, one for Winston Street to the next meeting. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion to the table? There shouldn't be any motion discussion on the motion to the table. All those in favor signify by uh, saying aye when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero. Yes. Councilor Flockhart. Yes. Councilor DeMarco. Yes. Councilor Terry. Yes. Councilor Honan. Yes. Councilor Conti. Yes. Councilor Perino. Yes. Vice President Christopher. Yes. President Boncori. Yes. Thank you. Okay, on the old business, there is a Winthrop zoning map update. Uh, and I think it's part of a memo to the planning board. Do you, you want to discuss that? It's separate from your other motion, Councilor uh, Vice President Christopher? Yeah, so we did not take this up um, in either the Rules and Ordinances Committee or the Joint Committee um, because I think we were just waiting to receive a um, some type of next steps from the town manager's office on it before we felt it was necessary for the council to take action on it. Um, so I don't know if, if they've done any work into that, but I think it's probably best if we wait till Austin comes back before we act on it. Okay, and I, I think this is an issue, uh, just so it's clear to the public, this is talking about the Winthrop zoning map update, not, not the middle school update, the entire town's uh, update. And I think uh, that's one of the reasons we brought Rachel on, and I think Rachel is working on that. Is that correct, Rachel? I, I see you're on the meeting. Yes. Rachel, of course, is our new planner. Uh, yes, so I definitely do have an update. Um, I put together some information. I, If um, you want me to proceed with that, I can kind of give you a quick rundown of what I have thus far. Just give us a quick rundown. I'm sure we're going to put it over uh, for future meetings, but you can give us a quick rundown as to where we are right now. Okay, great. Uh, Larissa, do you mind um, sharing that page I sent you? Sure thing. Thank you. Okay, so I did uh, reach out to three different uh, GIS special specialists uh, and received example contracts from all three of them on getting our zoning map updated to reflect you know, existing zoning and also have it be a more useful tool for the town. Um, in terms of what these uh, different companies can offer, uh, they've all got very flexible contracts and they all kind of go on an hourly, hourly rate basis. Um, and there's obviously multiple people per company that work on different things, um, you know, engineering and then senior GIS analysts, um, you know, administrative fees, all that kind of thing. And um, all these companies I've uh, listed there, just their uh, overlapping um, staff fees and hourly rates, just so you can kind of see it. Um, in terms of CAI and form in place, uh, these are companies that the town is uh, either currently working with or has worked with in the past. Um, CAI currently maintains our Access GIS uh, platform, and they also um, do our uh, assessors maps and our tax maps and and um, and those those maps that the town already uses. And then form in place, as you're probably aware, did the CBD master plan in 2000, 2017. Um, CGIS mapping is a little bit of a smaller company. Um, it's a two-man team, um, but they've got a you know pretty impressive resume in the area. Um, 
so in terms of cost, unfortunately, it's a little tough to get uh, an exact quote um, because, you know, they're going to have to go in and see how many hours and, you know, manpower it takes to create these zoning maps um, to reflect what we have going on in the town and all the different districts. Um, I did get one estimate about 20 to 40 hours and then using kind of a, a middle of the road rate uh, used their, um, you know, kind of a combination of their G senior GIS programmer was probably a little bit more expensive than the regular GIS programmer they'd use primarily. Um, but we're kind of looking at around, you know, for CAI and most likely form in place around 6,200. Again, that is an estimate. Um, and that would be to create um, a very functional, usable uh, zoning map that reflects all of our districts down to the parcel. Uh, so we can zoom in and really use it as, as a planning tool and as a tool for the town and not just kind of a, um, uh, you know, a quick reference, it's a little bit more of a useful tool. Um, CGI, CGIS is a little bit smaller scale, although, um, you know, they seem great as well. Um, so that kind of just breaks it down. Again, all the contracts are flexible. We can do it um, as a not to exceed if we want to set a limit. And then on top of that, all these companies down the road, if we need additional assistance with our GIS, we need additional maps made, um, you know, GIS is, uh, fantastic tool. You can make any map you can think of. So we have them, we can, you know, have them on a uh, contract on call to make anything that we needed. Um, the other thing was, uh, they're not like a monthly fee. It's just, you're only paying for what uh, they produce um, and what you request. So um, in terms of kind of moving forward, um, you know, you have some inf information there. I'm not 100% sure what the next steps would be. I'd have to discuss that with the town manager. Um, but this is, the, you know, basic data and kind of what we're up against with getting this zoning map updated. Um, and again, these, these costs are our estimates and it's tough to know when we dive down into it, how long it's going to take. But, you know, the base data is there and, um, and that does exist because we have to maintain that for the state and the E911 um, requirements, but um, you know, this is kind of just a, a good starting point uh, to get us going on this. Thank you, Rachel. And uh, this is in response to a letter we received in January 18th from the planning board requesting some professional guidance. And now that we have a town planner in, uh, she's working with the planning board, hopefully, to uh, get this town-wide map uh, updated because there are things that have not been included in it since uh, 2006. So we will uh, be working on getting that up to date. Thank you, uh, Rachel. Uh, so a motion to uh, keep this uh, issue on the agenda moving forward. Motion to table. Okay, motion to table. All those in favor signify by saying aye when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero? Yes. Councilor Flockhart? Yes. Councilor DeMarco? Yes. Councilor Terry? Yes. Councilor Honan? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Councilor Frino? Yes. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. It is tabled to uh, we'll remain on the agenda. Next thing uh, that we have is uh, French Square parking lot, overnight emergency parking. I believe this came out of um, Rules and Ordinance Council, Christopher, Vice President Christopher. Yes, it did. Um, the committee met last night on this. And I think um, more than a lot of things, this really unearthed a few issues that we have with our ordinance as it pertains to uh, municipal laws. Um, after reviewing our ordinances, I found it's very few um, mentions of municipal lots in our in all of our ordinances. Um, there's really only the only one that I felt would be that we could really um, include uh, that would make a difference as far as the French Square lot is in the um, the violations in section 103210. Um, which really just spells out all of the um, violations that you can be cited for for parking in, in Winthrop. Um, so essentially what the committee elected to do was that we would say um, within one of the violations that has to do with uh, parking over posted limits in municipal lots, um, we added a subsection 
saying that during calendar year 2021, the area known as French Square um, would be considered a municipal lot. I, um, I think traditionally how the town has done this is they just post, this is how long you can park there. Um, but because this is a temporary lot and it brings unique problems with it, I think that it would be good for the time being if we wanted to enforce um, enforce parking at the municipal lot as if it is a municipal lot that we should um, put it into our ordinances for this year. So Thank you, uh, have, the you have a motion that you sent out, I saw it earlier. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to get in. Um, so I'm going to, the motion was that we move to amend the table in section 1032.10 titled uh, Schedule C to add the following. Um, subsection C, during calendar year 2021, the area between Hagman Road and Woodside Ave, commonly known as French Square, is for purposes of this section considered a municipal lot. Okay. All right, that's coming out of committee. It does not need a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Council Terry. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Council Christopher, for doing that. Uh, just um, my original intention with bringing this forward was just to really make sure that we are all set in terms of a snow emergency uh, and people parking there an extended period of time. Is uh, all municipal lots under that same purview? So would this just fall into that or do we have to make a special designation for snow uh, emergency parking? No, that would, the, that you would need to have a special designation for a snow emergency parking. This would only uh, answer the question of whether or not it was enforceable um, to be in there over post in time. So I guess my question would be if there was a parking ban, would people not be able to park in there? Um, oh, can I ask the, you yeah. know, in, in this is a technical, can I ask even the chief or, or Director Callum maybe to chime in on that? I mean, the reason I, I brought this up was just to make sure it's easier for DPW to clean that, you know, temporary lot, um, you know, 24 hours after a snowstorm or when the parking restrictions lifted uh, to make sure that, you know, we can have that cleared. So I guess so, just to counsel Christopher, are we declaring that lot a municipal lot? If we declare it a municipal lot for this year, then all municipal lots you have to you have to be out in a certain time frame. Um, by I think by the nature and the effect of this of declaring it a municipal lot, it does fall under all the provisions of, of the other municipal lots. Okay. Um, so it does all, fall. So all municipal lots can be used in snow emergency in the same similar way, and same restrictions would apply as far as getting out in a timely manner. Yeah, and we're almost through this. I don't know, it was, uh, Steve, if we could have a, a sign made. Uh, I was hoping for no more snowstorms, but the Thursday one's coming. So I think just out of fairness, um, we, we treat it the same and we try to get a sign down there. Yep, I can certainly try to get a, a sign. It would have to be ordered, but uh, I don't know that it'll happen this, this week, but we'll certainly get one up quickly. Thank you, Steve. I, I, do, I think we are looking at a four inch to seven inch storm this Thursday. And Friday, so uh, every spot is going to be needed for people to park. So right. I can park my car down the center, is what you're telling me. Yeah. Right, if sure. you want to walk, sure. <laughs> All right. Council Christopher, is that it? Any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of accepting this ordinance change, please signify by saying aye when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero? Yes. Councilor Flockhart? Yes. Councilor DeMarco? Yes. Councilor Terry? Yes. Councilor Honing? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Councilor Perino? Yes. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Thank you. Motion uh, passes unanimously. Uh, next thing on the agenda is. Uh, Resolution urging fair and full opportunities, employment opportunities at Amazon. Uh, does someone want to bring that resolution forward? Does someone have it in front of them? Make that motion. If not, I'll pass the gavel and read it. Pass the gavel to uh, Council Christopher, Council Vice President. 
Yeah. You have it? Good. I got it. All right. Uh, this is a Town of Winthrop and Town Council resolution urging fair and full employment opportunities at Amazon. And it says, whereas Amazon has targeted the Town of Winthrop for expansion of its e-commerce network, and whereas COVID-19 has had a devastating impact on the health, safety, and well-being of the residents of the Town of Winthrop, and whereas preventative measures put in place to combat COVID-19 by state and local guidelines to prevent the spread and curtail transmission of the coronavirus have had a devastating economic impact on local retail establishments in the Town of Winthrop and have changed the retail options for the residents of the Town of Winthrop. And whereas preventative measures put in place to combat COVID-19 and whereas existing retail and e-commerce delivery networks currently operate in the Town of Winthrop and set community standards for every family with sustaining wages and benefits and including but not limited to quality health insurance and secure retirement. And whereas these retail and e-commerce delivery options coexist in Winthrop's diverse neighborhoods while adding value to the fabric of the community, including offering good careers for Winthrop residents to provide for their families. Am I on? Yep. Because I seem to have clicked off on my own computer. Okay. And whereas existing e-commerce delivery options have aptly served the residents of the town of Winthrop throughout the COVID-19 pandemic while maintaining the highest of standards for its essential workforce. And whereas Amazon, which does not conform to area standards for wages, benefits, working conditions, has targeted the Winthrop area for expansion of its e-commerce operations. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Winthrop Town Council, hereby assembled, urges Amazon to meet and confer with the Winthrop community, included but not limited to representatives from International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Local 25, locally impacted neighborhood groups, local residents, and other interested parties to discuss how Amazon can expand delivery operations, warehouses, and fulfillment centers in a way that is beneficial to the town of Winthrop and its residents while guaranteeing sustainable growth for the town and helping to ensure that fair and equitable employment standards are maintained for all e-commerce delivery networks throughout the town. And be it further resolved that prior to any expansion into the town of Winthrop, Amazon commits to and presents sufficient evidence to the Winthrop Town Council that its operation meets or exceeds the current community standards set by existing e-commerce delivery networks. This commitment would include that all delivery drivers to be direct employees of Amazon and not independent contractors. Amazon will ensure that all employed delivery drivers pass the most rigid background checks, including quarry checks and are compliant with all federal uh, Department of Transportation drug testing guidelines. Amazon will only hire competent and safe delivery drivers that will maintain the most professional conduct in their day-to-day -day operation in the neighborhoods of the town of Winthrop. So I believe that uh, is a resolution. Uh, Boston passed such a resolution to its council. I think it's res similar resolution is, is uh, post being heard in Revere. I don't know what action they've taken so far on it, but I know they are. And the difference is that they want to get a fair wage for drivers and they want these drivers to be uh, quarried before they start delivering and coming to your house delivering packages. So uh, that's the gist of the motion. Any uh, discussion? Oh, I'm sorry, Peter, you're in charge. Are there any questions for the council president? Uh, council Lethierry. Thank you. Are, are they are their drivers now not required to be quarried? I guess not. At least that's what um, they're telling I mean, us. I'm, assu I'm assuming a resolution to offer fair and equal employment. I mean, that's just their obligation, regardless whether we say it or not. Um, I just don't want to state the obvious, um, but I did not know that drivers were not being quarried at all before dropping packages off. Um, 
So is that so? Did this come from Amazon, or this came just out of no? The, this the, this came from um, the Teamsters, I believe, to each of the three towns, and they approached this as a regional issue because um, they are they are working here in uh, close to winter, and and I I do know I I know at least two people who uh, lost their jobs in restaurants in Boston over the past. Uh, COVID area that went to work for Amazon and they're not getting paid, you know, $50 an hour. That's for sure. And I know these people uh, have not been queried by them. These are people that were uh, working as, as restaurant uh, drivers or uh, uh, valet parkers in Boston. And I don't believe they have been queried. So okay. is it? But that didn't come to me from them. I, I just happened to know those those two people. Thank you. Are there any further questions? I have one Council question. Farino. And I don't know, uh, Council President, if you can answer this. Uh, are the other carriers like UPS and uh, DHL and some of the other independent ones, Corey, checked? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if their drivers are unionized. I don't know if they're Corey checked. But this seems to be what they're looking for here. Council Terry. So is this more of a union issue? Is this, you know, I mean, I just don't really, I, I don't understand. I, I mean, I can't vote on something I don't understand. And I'm just, this is very clear. Well, I, I think it, it's clear in what it says. It says that we want them to give a fair and equitable wage. And we want to have uh, their drivers, Corey, and comply with uh, drug testing guys. Headlines. I think it's it's a clear statement. I don't think it's uh, anything for beyond that. Council Honan. What are the other three cities, and how would we enforce this? Well, what, I don't know if there's enforcement. We're requesting them to come to the council and, and meet with us. Is I guess what we're doing as part of it, and where it's a resolution that we're putting forward for. Fair employment opportunities. I don't think that we enforce it because we have no power over what a private company does. I think it's just uh, asking them to be fair and to do the right thing as far as querying and drug testing their drivers before they send them into our town. So asking Amazon to make a pledge to the three <laughs> towns? And, and what are the three towns? It, just, no, no it's not three, just three towns, but I know that Boston has gotten this, and I know that Revere has gotten this, and they're both acting on it. I don't know if any other towns have gotten it. Uh, you know, I just know that we received a request uh, two weeks ago for this and put it on the last uh, council meeting, and now it's here before us again. Thank you, Council Flockhart. Uh, this seems like a reasonable thing to ask people who are coming to our homes. Um, so I don't think it's unreasonable to ask them to do this. No, I mean, it, it, it's a resolution. It's not like an order that we can put into effect. What we're doing is we're asking them to do right. the right thing nicely. And, uh, you know, I, it's nothing that we enforce or that we can enforce. It's, uh, it's not an order. It's not an edict. It's a resolution that we're sending to them saying, here's what we'd like, period. Thank you. Councilor DeMarco. Sorry. Just to follow up, just to follow up on Councilor Honan's comment um, and, and, and yours, uh, Council President. So this is something that Revere and Boston have already gotten. Uh, I believe. Boston has already got approval. I, I know it's in Revere, but I don't know where the stage it is in their um their city council because their city council doesn't meet, you know, they meet like us every couple of weeks. They're not a full time city council like Boston is. Boston is a city full time, fully paid city council that meet constantly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Council Terry. Thank you. Last comment. And and I agree with what Council Flockhart said that it just seems like common sense, but I, I don't agree that I mean, shouldn't we expect this from 
every corporation that's doing business in and around our area. I don't think we should single out anybody individually. I, you know, I, I agree with Councilor Flockhart that it's just an obvious thing that you want the right people, nice people, um, people that are Corey and everything else that's going to come and make deliveries. But I, I don't want to get into the practice of making resolutions to, to single, singling out certain companies to do that, not others. Okay. Any further discussion on the on the resolution? Okay. Seeing just, none. Just uh, I think. I, I'm yeah. sorry. Just be, I, I think it's coming to Amazon because Amazon's opening up here in Riviera, and that's why it's coming. It's the next door to us. Uh, these are the. Uh, I don't think anybody else says there's a bigger distribution center anywhere near us, but it's okay. Okay, any further discussion on the resolution? Okay, seeing none, uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilor Ruggiero? Yes. Councilor Flockhart? Yes. Councilor DeMarco? Yes. Councilor Terry? No. Councilor Honan? No. Councilor Conti? No. Councilor Perino? No. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Passes. You don't want to, you want to declare that a vote and pass me back to Gavel? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yep. We give back to Gavel, uh, Council President Boncori. Okay. I take it that it passed five to four. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. Motion passed five to four. Uh, moving on, the next thing we have on the agenda is um, Town Council authorized thirty-seven thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars for the use. Of retained earnings to the water and sewer fund, and I think that's council Terry's. Yes, we're going to continue that to the next meeting. Okay, uh, you're asking for a table. Yes. Okay, a motion's been made to table. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye when your name is called. Council Ruggiero. Yes. Council Flockhart. Yes. Council Demarco. Yes. Council Terry. Yes. Council Honan. Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Councilor Perino? Yes. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Thank you. Okay, the uh, next item on the agenda is oh, that motion is tabled. Uh, next item on the agenda is the town council vote to accept the vote from the Winter School Committee that the land located at 151 Pauline Street and 141 Pauline Street is transferred to the, from the school to the town of Winthrop. Um, I thought we had done this many years ago. We did do this, which is why yeah. we've been paying the bills since then. Yeah, no kidding. I thought we did this like five years ago, but I guess uh, they want another vote on it. I mean, uh, coming out of town manager's office, is a suggestion that we uh, vote again on it. Okay, uh, and and I have copies of the votes that were taken. Uh, and uh, does everyone have a copy of that? Someone put it into the uh, form. All right, Council DeMarco, you want to do it? You want to read the motion? It? No, I don't. I don't have it in front of me, but I've seen it. Okay. Does anyone else have it in front of them? If not, <laughs> again, I'll do the reading. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, right here, I have in front of me what had happened. The vote of the w Town of Winthrop School Committee moved that the Town of Winthrop School Committee hereby determines under the General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 15A, that town owned land located at 141 Pauline Street and shown as parcel 72 on an assessor's map 35, the surplus parcel, currently held by the School Committee for school purposes, is no longer needed by the town for such purposes and that the care, custody and control of said surplus parcel may be transferred by the school committee to the town for general municipal and conveyancing purposes uh, on such terms and conditions and for such consideration as the town deems appropriate. Uh, 
uh, and further that we authorize our chairman to forthwith give notice of this determination. Now, at the same time, there is a second vote of the Winthrop School Committee. And that was moved the town of Winthrop School Committee hereby determines under general laws, chapter 40, section 15A, the town owned land located at 151 Pauling Street and shown as parcel 32 on assessor's map 36, the surplus parcel currently held by the school committee for school purposes is no longer needed by the town for such purposes and that the care, custody, and control of said surplus parcel may be transferred by the school committee to the town council for general municipal and conveyancing purposes on such terms and conditions and for such consideration as the town that deems appropriate. And further that we authorize our chairman to forthwith give notice of this determination to the town council. Now, I have the two votes that were voted by the Winthrop Town Council. The first one says move that the town council hereby determines under general laws, chapter 40, section 15A, that the town owned land located at 141 Fowler Street, known as parcel 72 on assessor's map 35, the parcel, currently owned by the school committee for school purposes, no longer needed for the town for such purpose, and transfer the custody and control of said parcel to the town council for general municipal purposes and conveyancing. And purposes may be conveyed on such terms and conditions for such consideration as the town council deems appropriate. I thought we had voted that, but I believe we have to vote it again and separately on both pieces. So I put it before you on the piece of 141 Pauline Street. Uh, all those in any discussion on it? Okay, and I and I don't know why it's being revoted, so don't ask me that question, Jim. Well, well I, what I'd like to ask is, I, I mean, I'm not going to vote for it again, and that means that we just voted to do the 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 voting down there, so that was not a legal vote because we didn't have control of the property, and I, I just don't. But no, we did. We've had control of the property and paying bills for nine no, years. I understand that, but that's we did that because we voted it. Yes, but for some reason, I guess they don't have the record of it, and that's why the town manager is sending it back to us for another vote. And, and uh, I don't know any other reason why other than it came back to us from the town manager's office requesting another vote. So all those in favor, uh, any other discussion? Council Farino. I know it says the land, but uh, is... I, I know the town, we had surplused all the property and the town uh, reaped the benefit if, if we got any money for anything that was in there. So, I mean, uh, is it the land and property or, uh, so does the town now own all that equipment that's in there and all that, or is it, you know, is that Can something you, that's an issue? Or? Yes, I, I, I don't know, but, um, it says that the town owned land located at 141 Pauling Street. Uh, but we have been controlling it. I believe we have even auctioned off some of the stuff that was in there and have sold it. Is that correct, Anna? Uh, yes, that's correct. The contents were, were surplus. Um, I think that there was even a vote on that at some point. I can't remember anymore now. But um, yes, those contents were um, addressed uh, within the past sort of year or two. Yeah, and they were sold by the town. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Councilor Terry. And this is old business. We've discussed this before. Well, well we discussed I, it when we passed it nine years ago. Well, if we're I'm saying sorry. we discussed it and passed it, then we don't need to revote it. Now, if somebody yeah. lost the paperwork, that's another issue. But I mean, if we're I, I don't know that business, we're saying it was done. I, yes, but I don't know why it's back in front of us, but it is back in front of us. Yeah, Assistant Thomas, do you know why it's back in front of us? Unfortunately, I don't have an update on this particular issue. Um, I'm not sure um, if Rachel happens to know anything about this particular issue or if it's something where there are outstanding questions, perhaps it can wait until the next meeting when the town manager is back with us. Um, but I unfortunately do not know the background on uh, the specific language in front of you tonight for this item. Denise, would you know? Uh, oh, 
Uh, Rachel, I don't think he's been here long enough to even know yeah. we, we okay. have this issue in front of us. But maybe Denise okay. does know. Um, from my understanding, uh, K&P does not have a copy of the original motion. What I don't understand is if they just have lost it or they actually need one they said to be recorded. I mean, I think it, I, I mean, I'm not sure if it can wait. I can't talk like that, but. So this came from KMP and not from the town manager saying that they cannot find something recorded transferring the land. Is that correct? Right. They said they didn't have anything in their files. Okay. All right. And it, it should be easy to find by going into the Suffolk Registry of Deeds and finding it. Go ahead, Anna, go ahead. Just, just a quick question. We may want to, so the, my understanding is that the town took possession of the building, I believe, in the fall of 2016. So that's only four years ago. I, I imagine that we would have meeting minutes that would have both att attached to them that we could identify a copy. Um, I can actually look right now while, while we're underway in case those are online. But I'm wondering if we, I unfortunately, I don't know the background of this, but we may be able to locate this if it's, a, if it's an issue with town attorney not having something in their records. Okay, it, it may have been that we voted it back in 2016, if that's the date you, you're talking about, because I wasn't sure. I was just throwing a date out, knowing that we did it before. And it may never have been put into uh, the Registry of Deeds to transfer the title or to show it. And that's why Copham and Page may need it now. And I'm only surmising this because I'm a lawyer and. You know, I figure if they don't have it recorded, they want us to vote it again before they record it. Okay, Council Torino. Yes, I, I'd like to uh, table this until we get some answers, Council President, uh, until oh. the next meeting. Motion to table has been made. All those in favor of tabling, signify by saying aye when your name is called. Council Ruggiero. Yes. Council Flockhart. Yes. Council DeMarco. Yes. Councilor Terry. Yes. Councilor Honan. Yes. Councilor Conti. Yes. Councilor Frino. Yes. Vice President Christopher. Yes. President Boncori. Yes. I think we need to get more information as to why it's coming up again. Now, <laughs> there again we come up with a revote, and uh, I, I don't understand the need, the reason for this revote. Either, but I believe either Council or Terry or uh, 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 Assistant uh, Town Manager Anna Freeman can give us this revote. What we're asking here under all business is to revote the Town Council appropriating the sum of $750,025 to repay the cost of replacing the lead water service line, including all costs incidental and related to. And I know that we just passed that last. We, we did pass that council president the only thing on this is looking back at it it looks like we did not have sufficient amount of days that it was um, advertised so we just want to make sure that we have the uh, sufficient amount of days so we um, have a motion to revote it basically okay so i, I believe you have a motion uh, i do Coming on under on rule two that has to be passed unanimously it does but i'll Correct. ask if is that what the assistant town manager was discussing, the unanimous need? Uh, uh, that, and I, I just wanted to add one quick thing for the council as well, but uh, the reason this is so important and why um, it's um, sort of being added at this late moment is that we were on the verge of finalizing the paperwork so that we could get in the MWRA's um, financing schedule, which is in a couple of weeks. Um, this motion was passed by the council um, on November 24th, and it came to our attention as we were dotting I's and crossing T's that the proper notice wasn't given um, on the schedule of when it was published in the transcript. And so the, the previous vote then is not uh, proper, and our bond council can't certify, cannot give their opinion letter so that we can proceed with the borrowing. And so it is of an urgent nature that we take this up so we don't miss the timeline um, to finalize the borrowing, which is in a couple weeks from now. Um, so that's why it's uh, being brought up today. It was literally discovered uh, just um, hours ago. Okay, do you want to make that motion, Council Lettieri, as to the uh, rule I two will, change? I, I will do that. I move that the requirements of rule two of the rules of the town charter. Relating oh, to 
relating to the submission and inclusion of items on the agenda for consideration at town council meetings and hereby waived with respect to the loan order adopted by the town council on November 24, 2020, authorizing a borrowing of $750,025 for lead water line replacements from the MWRA. As it, it was determined today that the loan order needs to be passed again due to the loan order not having been published a, uh, a sufficient number of days prior to its previous passage to satisfy the requirements of Charter Section 2-9, Paragraph C, and I believe this requires a unanimous vote. Okay. Is there any discussion other than that? Uh, at the very first line is a requirement of Rule 2 under the rules of Town Council, not Town Charter. I think you had slipped into oh, Town, town Council. Council. Okay. It's Town Council. Okay. But any other uh, questions on it? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye, and uh, please call the roll. Council Ruggiero. Yes. Council Flockhart. Yes. Council DeMarco. Yes. Councilor Terry. Yes. Councilor Honan. Yes. Councilor Conti. Yes. Councilor Perino. Yes. Vice President Christopher. Yeah. President Boncori. Yes, it passes unanimous, and uh, we will move forward on to the motion. Uh, Councilor Terry, do you have that motion? I do. Motion that I move that Winthrop Town Council adopt the following order. Ordered that the town appropriates a sum of $750,025 to pay cost of replacing lead water line services, including all costs incidental and related thereto. That to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the town manager, is authorized to borrow a set amount under and pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7, Paragraph 1, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue these bonds and notes that the town therefore that the treasurer with the approval of the town manager is authorized to borrow all or a portion of such amount from the MWRA and in connection therewith to enter into a loan agreement and or financial assistance agreement with the authority and otherwise to contact contract with the authority with respect to such loans or any grants or aid available for the project or of the financing thereof that the town manager is authorized to accept and expend any grants or aid available for the project or for the financing. Therefore, that provided that the amount of the authorized borrowing for the project shall be reduced by the amount of any such grants or aid received, that the town manager is authorized to take any other action necessary to carry out this project, and that any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this order, less any such premiums applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment or cost approved by this order in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount of the authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Thank you, Councilor Terry. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to approve this uh, uh, borrowing of $750,025 uh, signify by saying aye when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero. Yes. Councilor Flockhart. Yes. Councilor DeMarco. Yes. Councilor Terry. Yes. Councilor Honan. Yes. Councilor Conti. Yes. Councilor Frino. Yes. Vice President Christopher. Yeah. President Boncori. Yes. Thank you. Okay, motion carries and unanimously. All right, we're moving on to new business and a new business. There are um, money motions before us, three money motions. The first one is the town council transfer $696,568.02 from free cash to the stabilization fund. The second is a transfer of $447,000 $47.10 from free cash to the general stabilization fund. And the third one is to transfer $48,510.48 from free cash to the building stabilization fund. I am uh, sending all three of those motions to the finance committee uh, to report at the next meeting for a vote. 
Okay, so they are sent to finance. Council Terry, the yours for now. Uh, the next new visit is discussion of regulations of the uh, Winter Board of Health restricting the sale of tobacco products. Thank you, President. I, yes. I think we I think we missed an item on old business, um, the middle school zoning. Uh huh. We did. We'll, I'll go back to that. All right. Let's let's finish this, and then we'll take a motion to go back to. Uh, let's finish new business. We'll take a motion to go back to old business. As far as uh, regulations of the Board of Health, it's my understanding some kind of video presentation was sent, and uh, I, would you wishes to see that now, or should I just uh, send this? Because if it is going to be a about regulations, it probably should go to rules and ordinance to uh, see what they confirm whether our uh, bylaws or not. Although the Board of Health can set its own regulations. All right. Uh, motion to refer. Motion to refer to the. Uh, second. And seconded to the uh, Committee on Rules and Ordinance. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Councilor Ruggiero. Yes. Councilor Flockhart. Yes. Councilor DeMarco. Yes. Councilor Lettieri. Yes. Councilor Honan. Yes. Councilor Conti. Yes. Councilor Frino. Yes. Vice President Christopher. Yes. President Boncori. Yes. Thank you. Okay, our next issue is to discuss the March 2nd, uh, 2021 Town Council meeting dates and it's on the same day it's going on the same day as the primary again so when uh denise uh, brought forward that she thought that we should meet on march 9th and 23rd rather than on uh, the second and that way there's five uh, weeks in march and we would only have two weeks in between meetings if we kept it the same as it is we at the end of the meeting from March to April, we would have had a three-week wait. Does uh, anybody want to make a motion to do that? To move our March meetings to motion. March 9th and 23rd? Motion by Councilor Honan uh, to move our two meetings in March to uh, March 9th and 23rd. Is there a second? Second. And a second by Councilor Flockhart. Any discussion on the motion? Councilor uh, DeMarco. Uh, why not just move it a day forward or a day backwards and, and spend <laughs> it on our regular schedule? Well, it being a day forward and a day backward, when everybody knows our meetings are on Tuesdays, it kind of throws things off because other committees meet on Wednesdays and on Mondays, like school committee is usually meeting the Monday before our meeting. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure which day the school committee is meeting. You know better than I do. But yeah. but I mean, if yeah, we they, if we could just push it off a day, I mean, why not just keep our regular two weeks? And let, unless you think it's better to, to skip a week, I, I I'm I'm all for anything, President Boncori. I just I just uh, I don't think we need to go three weeks without meeting. That's all. Well, we will one or sooner or later. Yeah, well, you would at the end of uh, the second meeting in March, if you kept it the same, it would be three weeks to the first meeting in April. So at some point when you have these five week months, you have to miss three weeks. But it's, okay. it's on my motion and it would- No, I'll, 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 su I'll support it. I just, I just want a justification, that's all. Any other discussion? Uh, we got a, a question, Council President. I was just curious as to uh, why, I mean, I can understand a local election, uh, but I, you know, this is a state, state primary. Um, I don't really see uh, why we couldn't meet. Um, it's not a holiday. It's not, uh, you know, uh, people vote during the day and when they come home from work in the morning. Uh, is there any particular reason or? Well, I mean, I, I know our clerk, I don't know, is it is it a staffing issue? Or? I, I, I don't think it's a staffing issue, we, other than that we have always not had meetings on an election night. As far as history, we've never met on an election night. Uh, it, 
All right. So it's, it's, it's even yeah. though it's a local it's special a election, yeah. I, and I understand what you're saying. You know, it, it you know, polls are open till eight o'clock. Our meeting started at seven. You know, we don't want to distract anything from the election, and uh, we don't want anything being distracted from people attending our meeting. So, I guess that's the reason we haven't held them during elections before. Councilor Terry. So just for clarification, I think this is fine. So we're just making a motion to suspend the council rules and to change the meeting dates in March to uh, March 9th and March 23rd. That's exactly Councilor Honan's motion that was seconded by Councilor Flockhart, and you've stated it very clearly. Well, thank you. I move the <laughs> that we're suspending the rules. All right, all those in, in favor, please signify by saying aye. Councilor Ruggiero. Yes. Councilor Flockhart. Yes. Councilor DeMarco. Yes. Councilor Terry. Yes. Councilor Honan. Yes. Councilor Conti. Yes. Councilor Frino. Yes. Vice President Christopher. Yes. President Boncori. Oh. I see that big laugh. It's a rule change. And I, all right. One a night is enough. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, I guess uh, we there's a next thing on our agenda is a, a recommendation from the Board of License. We received a letter today from the Board of License, and I, I don't know how this even got on the agenda today, but having received a letter today uh, on it, I am going to refer this to the Finance Committee because the issue is uh, whether or not um, there is money to. Uh, return license fees. So uh, I'm sending this to the Finance Committee. Is there any discussion on that? I see someone's hand is up. Uh, Michael, go ahead. Uh, so this is a discussion on licensing fees and obviously it's gonna go to a committee, but um, I think I think the biggest issue with this is um, the restaurants in our town and the fact that, you know, a lot of them haven't been able to do their business as normal from, I mean, more than months. I mean, it's been a long time and we're still charging them the regular fee. I think I, th I, th I think we're talking about probably $400 a month or something like that for these businesses. Um, you know, I think we should really um, look inside ourselves and and see that, you know, we, sh we should be at least giving them something back. Um, I don't, I, that, that's just my opinion. Other people might think differently, but I mean, when it comes to the restaurants in this town that are hurting, um, I I can't think of a better way to give back to them than to at least give them part of this back or something back. And, and, and that's, that's, that's where I'm coming from. That's all I got. Thank you. And did someone else have their hand up? I did. And uh, I was always under the impression that the town manager sets the fees. He does. And we really don't set the fees, uh, but a letter was put into the transcript with some erroneous information in it, and it uh, shouldn't have even been published with the erroneous information, uh, seeing that the letter was sent to us, and, and when it wasn't, and it came to us today, and before anybody uh, was addressing what was put in the transcript without coming here first or, uh, or saying that the town manager denied this, when he did not deny it, uh, and then it could come to the council. That's why he's here now. We just, uh, I want to clear up that uh, the letter put in the transcript without coming here first and getting an answer is uh, a wrong way to approach things. So um, we'll send this to the Finance Committee to discuss, and then we will have a discussion on it at the next meeting because we can't really do it on the first time it's on a agenda. So let's get it to it sooner rather than later. And I agree that uh, I feel bad for every restaurant and that's why we've done everything in our power to allow them to open and to allow them to uh, pay their fees over time. Denise has given them all that kind of authority and uh, no one has requested anything other than this one letter which we received today. All right, so um, moving forward, this is assigned to the finance committee. There it is. All right, uh, 
entertain a motion to revert back to new business. Motion. Motion. Motion been made by uh, Vice President Christopher, seconded by Council DeMarco to revert back to new business. All those in favor say aye when your name is called. Council Ruggiero. Yes. Council Flockhart. Yes. Council DeMarco. Yes. Council Terry. Yes. Council Honan. Yes. Council Laconte. Yes. Council Frino. Yes. Vice President Christopher. Yes. President Boncori. Yes. Thank you. Okay, if you need a minute, we revert back to new business and now under new business, I apologize uh, for skipping over uh, the medical school zoning, which is uh, number 12.J on the agenda uh, because uh, for 12 point I, I mean, because 12 point J was a red line, so I went right to that. But it's 12 point I on the uh, middle school uh, zoning. Uh, we have a motion, Council Christopher or Council Honan from the Joint Committee. Yes. Uh, the Joint Committee on Rules and Ordinances make the following uh, recommendation to the Winter Planning Board to rezone parcel one in the attached map as Center Business District to strike section 175210 subsection D in its entirety to amend footnote 14 in appendix to chapter 17.16 titled table of dimensional regulations to read 2.5 stories slash 35 feet for the area of a structure that is within 75 feet of a residential district four stories 48 feet otherwise to add the following after the fourth paragraph of section 171240, subsection C, for parcels of land greater than 20,000 square feet, the applicant may apply for and the planning board may grant at its discretion a special permit allowing the applicant to use no less than 25% of the area facing public access ways for a non-residential use and to maintain parcel two in the attached map as residential A. Okay. That is a recommendation from the Joint Committee to the Planning Board as we send this now to the Planning Board to come up with a zoning recommendation. Everybody understand that? Is there any discussion on it amongst the councils? Council Ruggiero. Thank you, Council President. I just want to um, just throw in here as a member of this Joint Committee that an incredible amount of work went into putting forth um, this, this recommendation to the planning board. I think at our last meeting, we had at one point close to 30 members of the public and eight councilors on the call, um, all working on this issue together. Um, and so, and we also had members of the planning board on there as well. So this is really a um, community-based sort of recommendation here. Um, and I'm going to support this uh, moving forward, just like I did in committee, but, um, I really just am excited to get the ball rolling on this and really get moving. This is something that the community has wanted for quite some time now. Yes. Council Perino. I have a quick question, Council President, and you probably will be able to answer this the best. Uh, would this be a mute uh, motion if, in fact, we hadn't? Uh, the, there's no record of us transferring the uh, middle school property to the town? <laughs> <laughs> It could be, but I know that we did that. And if there was just some housekeeping, it has to be done that KNP is suggesting. I think uh, we can do that later and send this out. Uh, my intention in, in running for this office and, and, and stating the very first meeting that I was going to get this middle school project finally done after six years, that I want this moved over to planning and to get some kind of planning uh, zoning on this so that we can go forward and get this done. Uh, it's been it's been way too long that we've been waiting on this. And I wanna thank that committee. Um, it's been working jointly in for 14 months on this and putting it together. And they had a wonderful meeting the other night. And not only do we have members of the planning board on, but we had many members of the original committee uh, that were set up to uh, do the, uh, the project on it, uh, such as, uh, you know, Joe Aiello and, and uh, others uh, that were on that original committee, who I am going to all ask to get involved with the planning board as the planning board discusses this, uh, so that 
the planning board can't come up with the right thing. Of course, whatever the planning board comes up with does come back to the council and the council can make whatever changes it wants on it at that time. So my, my uh, request is that we send it to the planning board now. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing Councilor Terry. I, I too want to thank the, the two committees for their hard work on this in many months. Um, I mean, it would have been nice to have public meetings like the old, older days, like over a year ago, to have uh, a good round conversation on a lot of this stuff. But you know, the planning board ultimately is going to, who knows, make some changes or not, and then it's going to come back. Um, I still can't support anything that is is looking at potentially uh, leaving Winthrop without a rink, and there's no guarantees that this does not do that. So I will not be supporting this. I do respect the council president's wishes, and I know since day one, this has been a goal of his to really, you know, and Winthrop's been waiting for this for five years now, and uh, and I understand we need to do something. Um, I just can't in good conscience do it with including the rink in it. Council Christopher. Okay, I, I just wanted to be clear about this, that the rink is currently zoned for residential. Um, we're, we're merely changing that right now. So whatever the future of the rink is, um, I, you know, that will be determined at another date. Um, so just because we're changing the zoning uh, for what the rink uh, is currently zoned for, that does not mean that uh, at any point we, we are going to necessarily do anything like sell it or anything like that. Um, I, so I just want to be clear with everybody on the call that this zoning move would not make it any more or less likely that the town would do anything like getting rid of the rink. Um, I think that that's a very important uh, thing. And I, I personally have, have no intention on uh, doing anything with the rink. I want to make sure that the town continues to have a hockey rink and that the hockey community is supported in this town. And I think all of uh, the members of this committee that worked on this for the past year felt exactly the same way. Okay. On the motion to refer it to the planning board for a recommendation, uh, all those in favor signify by saying yes when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero. Yes. Councilor Flockhart. Yes. Councilor DeMarco. Yes. Councilor Terry. No. Councilor Honan. Yes. Councilor Frino. No. Vice President Christopher. Yes. President Boncori. Yes. Motion passes. Motion passes. It's referred to the planning board. Uh, seeing no other new or old business, I will now open this up to public comment. I see one person. Out of 19, I uh, had the hand up. I see now two hands. Go ahead. Yeah, they're, they're all coming in now. Um, so they're coming Kathleen, in. <laughs> Kathleen, you had your hand up first. Hi, everyone. It's Kathleen Capuccio again. Hi, Kathleen. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Hi. Go ahead, um, yeah. I actually wasn't, uh, sorry, I actually wasn't going to comment again. Um, but I think, and I'm not sure who's listening. We voted on the new middle school on November 5th of 2013, seven years. So I find it, I don't know, embarrassing that counselors are, are patting themselves on the back for making decisions with no weight over the past couple of months. There was a vote that you guys had 20 minutes ago, the transfer of 151 and 141 Pauline Street from the school to the town. No one knew what was going on. Everyone was confused. No one should be proud of what's going on right now. This is an embarrassment. Shame on the town council and shame on anyone that thinks that you've done great work. This is embarrassing. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. That, but moving on. Next is uh, Wendy Malapage, I believe. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Wendy, go ahead. Hi, everyone. It's Wendy. Hi, hi Wendy. How are you? Precinct two. Um, so I have a couple of quick notes. One, I have a suggestion as you guys move forward to forwarding the thing to licensing. So something that we did in another city that I work with, we renewed um, common civic licenses. We just extended them when we renewed them without charging them the fee for this year. Um, and we did that also with um, other establishments that would have suffered in terms of being closed, or reduced capacity of 50% over the last year. That was really well received um, from the folks um, in the small business sector. They really appreciated um, knowing that, you know, it was a reduction in what um, revenues were coming in, but it was a way to say, hey, we know it's hard for you. We don't want you to go anywhere and we value you staying in our community as, as a business. So that's on, on behalf of that. And, and I rarely call with any kind of criticism. So I want you to hear this as, as open hearted as I can be. Regarding the resolution with Amazon, it's very difficult, um, and I have been working with them a little bit. It's very difficult for us to have any level of say over their third-party vendors, for example, FedEx, UPS, or their <laughs> that they then hire. Um, and I know it's it's a safety issue. I hear you on the on the quarry check. However, a lot of those drivers go through very extensive um, testing before they're allowed to you know to become drivers. It's just kind of a slippery slope if you're looking at doing that, um, because you're going to, I mean, we have trucks in and out of this town all day long. I would rather the MWRA guys get checked before, you know, a FedEx guy who I know goes through expensive testing. So it's just something that concerns me a little bit. Um, and I'm not anti-union in any way. That's not the statement I'm trying to make. I just think we need to be realistic. Um, and, and I understand trying to support it, but that's kind of a little weird to me. Um, and then the other thing is, I know that a lot of people aren't really involved in this vote um, that's coming up on March 2nd. I, I strongly feel, uh, based on my whole heart, that any kind of local vote that affects us directly from a, a school committee to town council to representatives in the state, that affects our day-to-day -day life more than typically than the national election. These are the kind of things we have to pay attention to and kudos to um, WCAT and the Winter Chamber for putting together um, for tomorrow night uh, a debate. And so people really need to get out there and vote on the second. It's, it's important who's gonna be representing us. And with that, thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Next. Um, next up, we have Peter Gill. Peter Gill. Hi, PD, you there? Unmute mute yourself. PD is still showing is muted. Eloisa, how does he unmute? Can you do it? Um, I asked him to unmute on my way, but um, I mean, Mr. Gill, if you want to try the Alt A key, or if you're on your phone, star six. Okay, is there anyone else who wants to while we wait for Peter? There's no other hands up. Peter, if, can you call in on the phone and we can do it that way? Are we there now? Oh, you're here. Phone? Yeah, you're there. Oh, the iPad wasn't working right. Um, I just want to th say thank you to the uh, the committee for the work on the middle school uh, zoning questions and for the way they listen to the public, the neighbors on, on Waldemar Avenue and um, the other members of the committee that um, that worked so hard on this for many years ago. So thanks again, guys and girls, and uh, look forward to, to something happening here. Good night, all. Good night, Peter. Thank you. Any other public comment? Karen Chavez, I see. Yes. 
Good evening. Hi, Karen. Um, first of all, if KMP doesn't have any record of uh, that vote that took place, I'm not exactly sure when it did happen. I think that the schools relinquished the keys, though, on July 1st of 2016. If they don't have um, anything related to that, I certainly hope they didn't charge us for going into some <sighs> county deeds for doing the work for us. So maybe somebody should check into that. Sure I, I believe the, the vote was taken, Karen, on 6 20 of 2016. I don't know why nobody has found right. that in well, a minute. Too, and they I gave was, us the keys on, on that July 1st. You're right. That's that, right. I, I, I remember that well. I mean, I did SBAC for 11 years. So believe me, I remember the day well. Um, the other thing is, I want to compliment uh, the CFO, Assistant Town Manager. It was probably one of the best town manager reports we've had in a long time. Um, I would like to have heard a little bit more about finances than were brought out. But I understand that uh, with the town manager not being here, she probably didn't want to do it. The other thing is, as far as the rink is concerned, um, I think everybody knows how I feel about the rink. The complete opposite of what I think about the ferry. Um, the rink is a stabilizing thing in this town. There are many, many kids that play down there day in and day out. And no matter what Councilor Vice President Christopher says, if somebody comes in and wants to buy that whole parcel, you can't tell me that the town's not going to sell the rink out from underneath us. And that doesn't mean that a, a new person, a developer or whatever coming into town is even going to have to put a rink there. Being a member of the rink committee for the last, I don't know how many years, Councilor Terry, maybe five or six, we've been trying to put in new locker rooms down there. And we've been stymied every single time. We've had two different architects that we've paid to have the work done. And now here we go again. We're gonna be held back again. The rink, maybe not a great part of the town, a lot of people will say, but the rink is self-sufficient. The town gives that rink nothing. Everything that that rink gets that the is brought in by revenue that Bobby Demento and his crew down there have worked hard to keep up with. We've had two or three high schools that didn't have any place to play this year because both Endicott and Salem State wouldn't let them into their rinks. So they used our facilities. You know, you really have to stop and think about this. The rink is the rink. And no matter what anybody I'm sitting at that council right now says, you can't tell me that if a person comes in and wants to develop that whole property, they won't sell the rink too. One more thing, Councilor Farino, as far as you not having a meeting on voting night. I work the polls from 6A to 9P and I would miss your meeting and I would hate to miss your meeting. So I'm glad they changed the dates. Thank, Thank you, you, Karen. <laughs> You're right. You haven't missed a meeting ever. <laughs> All right, anyone else? No, nope, I don't see any. Oh, Karen, did you just put your hand up? No, nope, she put it back down. <laughs> okay, uh, there's no other hands. Okay, hearing none, I will close public comment. Uh, does anyone have any public relations on the council that they'd like to discuss? Council President? Yes. Not necessarily public relations, but I would just like uh, council clerk to post a finance committee meeting for uh, next Tuesday, the 23rd, and also a finance commission meeting for Wednesday the 24th, the agendas will follow tomorrow at six o'clock. Both meetings? Yes, please. Okay, gotcha. Okay, any other one? Council Farino. Yes, uh, Council President, and I apologize for not uh, touching base with you before the meeting. Uh, we did lose uh, one of our members from the Historic Commission, George Senate. Uh, he passed away this past week. And he's been on the commission for about 10 or 15 years. And uh, he, he served us well with the, uh, with the Don Simonetti uh, room. He refurbished that whole room. He did work with Jeff Duro on the, uh, uh, the layout of the narrow gauge. And uh, uh, he's gonna be missed on the commission and in this community. He was a wonderful gentleman, great businessman and a uh, great father. So I just wanna bring that to your attention. Thank you, Council Farino. I, I wish I, uh had thought of it and heard that sooner. And I, George was a great man and he should be recognized 
in next uh, meeting's uh, moment of silence for sure. Okay. Denise, please make that notation. Yep. Okay. Uh, and hopefully we lose no more between now and then. Uh, anybody have any other public comments? Okay, I guess there is uh, one announcement that already was made, and that's that there's going to be a debate between the uh, candidates for uh, state rep uh, tomorrow night. Uh, check in on it and uh, watch it. Make a concerned and educated vote. Uh, and uh, please, if you have any uh, situations, or you're want to go down the waiting list to get a COVID shot, please call in to that 617-539-5837. Again, 617-539-5837. And get on the waiting list because, you know, we're pushing. And, and Joe's, uh, Senator Joe Bonfer is pushing DPH to get us our own vaccines. And we have the ability to do this uh, clinic for the 65 and over as soon as we get the vaccines. So get yourself on a waiting list. Um, and even if you're not, you know, over 65, because sometimes we use uh, eight shots in a bottle or nine shots in a bottle, and we have to give out that 10th one because it's not going to go to waste. So if you're on a waiting list, you might get a call at 5.30 at night and say, hey, we have one shot. You want to get it if you're on a waiting list. So get yourselves on the waiting list, please. Okay, and be patient. Uh, we, it's one way or another, we're going to get to everybody. And uh, we're going to fight to get more vaccine for this town. Okay, uh, thank you. There are openings for committees. Please, if you're interested in being on any committee, and one of the most important ones is planning board that there is an opening on. And they're getting this, uh, this thing this week to uh, make that zoning for the middle school. I'd like another body on there. So please uh, look on, file an application. And I'd like to put a person on that committee to help work on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's all I have. Does anybody else have anything? If not, I'd like to say a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero. Yes. Councilor Flockhart? Yes. Councilor DeMarco? Yes. Councilor Terry? Yes. Councilor Honan? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Councilor Frino? Yes. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. Please be safe, everyone. Please be safe.